Oh, wow. All right. Cool. Cool jungle biome. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Let's get some what? Oh. oh, that's weird. All right. Hey, what happened to my inventory? Oh, oh okay. Um, why isn't my inventory working? Oh, shit. So Minecraft every year, usually, releases an April Fool's update. Usually, they are fun and add something small. This one in 2022 is different, however. Instead of changing one aspect of the game, they have changed numerous things. One extremely obvious change is the inventory, with there being no inventory. After I was done reading the article, I went up and started up Minecraft. And the first problem already sparked was, you can't get any blocks in creative. So, testing everything that I was going to test was going to be extremely difficult. Also, the first problem I ran into was that the trees are basically useless. You can't craft anything. It's almost unbeatable. But I'm going to try to find my way how to beat it. My first idea was chests, but as you can see from the footage, they don't open the way you'd think they'd open. You see, instead of right-clicking, you have to left-click them and actually break the chest to open it. Well, in quotes, open it. Instead of opening, they explode out into a bunch of items, as you see on the floor. And this gave me an idea. This was almost perfect for me. You see, by finding obsidian and a flint steel in the same chest, you could possibly make a nether portal. Obviously this is sort of rare, but it is possible, meaning that getting to the nether is possible. Your best chances are finding ruin portal types 1 and 6. These have the lowest amount of obsidian possible to, to finish a rune portal. This is one of the lucky spawns. I got a portal type 1 with two obsidian blocks. However, I was being stupid and uh, lost a lot of health just trying to get the one obsidian block. Um, make sure to pick up the sword when you're in this situation because it comes back and hurts you. This obsidian block in particular was a floating block. So you can still pick it up with your bare hands. Um, however, if it is placed like the one back there, you are going to need a diamond pickaxe, which is, by the way, one time use only. So here I'm going to give myself a diamond pickaxe, just to show you that you can still get this block. So here you go. So there, now you've the completed another portal. There is a fireball right here that you can light and there. That is how you get to the nether. As soon as I went to the nether, I instantly looked for a piglin to see if I could murder with some uh, piglins. However, uh, the combat system is really weird where you have to pick up things and throw them. I instantly also thought of throwing them off cliffs to get their loot. However, the bartering system and also piglin drops and stuff like that do not work the same as they do in normal Minecraft. Trying to barter with piglins is also extremely difficult, as by just throwing the item at them, it works the same. However, them giving stuff back to you is nothing. This makes the nether almost and utterly completely useless, as we can't get ender pearls from bartering, nor can we get blaze rods from blazes, as they do not take fall damage. The only way to get ender pearls is with endermen by throwing them off cliffs. However, there is a slight possibility that they can teleport, so getting them is difficult, also getting them on top of a mountain is extremely difficult, as them spawning is a lower chance than any other mob. This then got me thinking about villages, as the 14 update made them pretty helpful, even with the circumstances that we have now. You see, villages have chests and cauldrons, meaning we can get water buckets. Sort of. You see, a way to get the water bucket in a plains biome is by getting a fisherman's hut, which is rare because you need to be by a coast. You also need the chances of the coastal village which is in the fisherman's house, to drop a water bucket. The reason that you'd want just a bucket is so that you can use the cauldrons. Instead of using the water bucket normally, it instead places the item. However, you can use the water bucket as in a way to throw the water bucket. Throwing the water bucket will cause the water to splash everywhere, as seen over here. 
this is insanely useful as we can get up to higher places with unneeding blocks. Since mobs work normally, we are going to need armor. Unfortunately, the only armor piece that works is helmets, as all the other pieces of armor just do not work properly. With weapons, they work differently. Instead of swinging your sword, you throw your sword. This is what makes the nether just a little bit more useful now, since we can actually kill blazes. Unfortunately, we cannot use those blaze rods as there is no inventory to craft them with ender pearls, so we're basically back to square one. So let's say you take everything we learned, you finally get to the end, and there's nothing. You can't actually beat the game. The game is unbeatable in this version of Minecraft. That's it? No, it's actually not. So, basically, it's unbeatable in vanilla with no cheats. However, with cheats, you can still technically beat the game. You just have to turn uh, cheats on before you enter the game. You also just need to give yourself end portal frames to actually build the end portal. And for some reason in this version of Minecraft, the rotation of the end portals does not matter. As you can see in this clip, uh, it doesn't really work correctly, but it, it works. And you can actually get into the end. This is why the villages are so important. You see, beds in this version work the exact same way as they do in normal Minecraft. The only reason, the only difference being is that you can't hold them in your inventory. However, you can place them down and sleep with them as normal, meaning they can explode in the end. This is a lot cheaper than using pickaxes as they break once even after you use them. At the diamond pickaxe, it is one time use only, so this bed is a cheaper and the easier option. Also, in this upcoming clip, I absolutely suck at this. <laughs> Um, so you can see me mess up and start freaking out because I didn't do it right. Uh, however, I think with someone with actual, um, Ender Dragon perching, I don't know what the hell it's called, uh, skills can actually do it properly and win the game. Um, I force killed the dragon just to see if you could actually, you know, like, finish the game. Um, and you can. So, yeah, it's good. Also, this perched also the perch took me eight minutes so i was not waiting another eight minutes so i just killed it this is where the villages come in handy as you can place the end stone on top of the well on the end pillars therefore you're getting the water up and placing more blocks to get up there this is really helpful to get to the end crystal which unfortunately you can't break with your hand however throwing a block at it will break it thank you guys so much for watching this was such a fun video to make while i was sick it was also kind of unfortunately timed since I can't really spend too much time on it since, well, I am sick. However, these are just some of the ways I found out how to beat the game, but I'm pretty sure that some people are going to find out more ways to, to get to the end in this version of Minecraft.